Hello, folks. It's Thursday, October 3rd. It's about 1030 in the morning on the West Coast of the United States. In this video, we'll be talking about fractional ounce bars and coins, and of course, silver and gold. That's <laughs> precious metals. That's what I talk about mostly. So let me share my screen here and we'll get going. Uh, fractional gold, fractional silver, how to buy. They all kind of wrapped up a uh, number of aspects of this topic. So what is fractional gold? Well, obviously it is gold bars and gold coins that are less than one ounce. That would be the technical definition. But I also have to include in this category of fractional ounce coins, the oddball, um, primarily it's a two ounce coin. And so uh, in a number, whether you go to an online broker or through a gold IRA dealer, one of the options you may be presented with is a two ounce coin. And as we'll see, as we progress through this video presentation, uh, the premiums on those two ounce coins, they're ridiculous, uh, just the way the premiums are on fractional ounce coins. And so <laughs> if you only take away one thing from this video, this is all you need to know. If, if you're not a specialist in gold and silver, you don't know the first thing about gold and silver, but you want to buy some anyway, that right there is the only thing you need to know when you go interact with, whether it's your local coin shop, an online broker, a gold IRA representative. I want one ounce bullion, emphasis on bullion, bars or coins, and bars or coins doesn't make much difference, but I want one ounce bullion. <laughs> and that's all you need to know. You can turn the video off right now and you will know more than uh, a lot of uh, people who go out and buy physical precious metals and and um, unfortunately get taken advantage of. And, and that's what I'm uh, focused on in this slide. How not, not to buy gold, same thing applies for silver. So I'm an affiliate marketer for gold IRAs. And from time to time, I go out, I go to a Better Business Bureau, I go to their website, and I research one company or another um, just to see what, what are consumers, customers having to say currently about the gold IRA companies. You know, I, I try to stay on top of the industry. And so this is a recent, uh, it's from January of 24. You can read this on your own. Pause the video, read this. Um, it, it's worth reading through. I'm not going to waste your time reading it. But but notice in this uh, in this complaint, this is a Gold IRA customer filing a complaint with the Better Business Bureau. And notice what he bought. He bought quarter ounce gold coins, uh, gold lucky dragons, and two ounce silver coins. Again, two ounces, not fractional ounce, but I'm putting them in the same category because the um, the premiums are just ridiculous and, and another two ounce. And so, and this is what the customer is saying. The markup on their precious metals is insane. And of course, this consumer, he only interacted with one company. So he doesn't know that all of the companies, and it doesn't matter, Gold IRA company, your local coin shop, an online broker, you're going to pay, in my opinion, outrageous premiums for fractional ounce coins and bars. And, you know, again, this, this customer doesn't know it. So they're making the assumption, and I see this quite often in the, the Better Business Bureau complaints, uh, they're assuming that the company that they are dealing with is somehow unique. You know, the, oh, these they're a bunch of crooks, et cetera. No, it's pretty much across the board. Is the, <laughs> um, you're you're going to pay a, a, an excessive premium uh, for fractional ounce coins and bars. So gold buying mistakes, fractional ounce coins. That's, that's my object. You know, this is what I'm trying to communicate to you in this uh, video presentation. You know, this is a mistake, in my opinion, buying fractional ounce coins. Again, I want one ounce bullion bars and coins, period, you know. And, and if, 
if a, a salesperson or a representative and they come back at you with, oh, well, these special edition coins, they're in greater demand from investors and you'll make more money. Well, don't walk away, run. Because <laughs> who, whoever you're talking to that is giving you that kind of BS, they're not, they don't have your best interests at heart. They're trying to sell you what they make the most money on. And, and so again, one ounce bullion bars and coins. So two ounce coins, proof coins. This is another one. And, and the, the representatives, the salespeople, they're trying to try to tell you that there is greater investment demand for proof coins. And it's absolute BS because knowledgeable investors are not going to pay a premium for a proof coin. Gold is gold. I've been buying physical precious metals for more than 20 years now. And I tell you, gold is gold and silver is silver. It doesn't matter what format it's in. It doesn't matter whether it's a shiny proof coin in a fancy box with a certificate of authenticity. All of that crap is sales marketing trying to separate you from your hard-earned money. Don't fall for it. <laughs> you know, if you don't want to be this guy or gal, don't fall for their marketing BS. Just understand what you are looking for is one ounce bullion. Again, emphasis on bullion, bars and coins. So no proof coins. And then special edition. And this this is another this is another area where the, the salespeople, the gold IRA representatives, they will take advantage of you if you let them. They'll try to tell you that these special edition coins have greater investment demand and, and you'll make more money on them when you sell. And, and again, it's just sales marketing. Um, and in particular, when they try to tell you there's greater investment demand, because I can assure you that knowledgeable investors in physical precious metals, they are not going to pay a premium for a special edition coin. I, I don't want this to be a long video. I could I could go on. <laughs> I could go on about that, but I won't. So again, how to buy gold? One ounce bullion bars and coins. And, and again, that's that's all you need to know. Now there are a number of aspects of buying physical gold that um, it does get a little bit uh, nuanced, complicated. Uh, and that's why I've, I've, I've emphasized multiple times now, if you could walk away, if all you walk away from this video with is the, the knowledge of, I want one ounce bullion bars and coins, you're, you're head and shoulders above many, many people, like, like the example we started with, the person filing the uh, BBB complaint. So... Uh, four places where you can get precious metals, physical precious metals, a gold IRA company, uh, mainstream online broker, uh, JM Bullion, AppMex, heck, these days, uh, Costco, uh, and even Walmart. I saw recently that Walmart is starting to sell uh, uh, bullion. So anyway, mainstream brokers, um, private online brokers, and it's, it's likely that you will get a better deal, and there's several of these. Uh, you'll get a better deal at a private online broker than you will from one of the mainstream uh, brokers. And then, of course, your local coin shop. And this is my preferred way. Actually, it's the only way for 20 years, 20, 20, 20 plus years. Uh, this is the only way that I have purchased physical silver and gold. I go to my bank, I get cash, emphasis on cash, and I go to my local uh, coin shop and I walk out of the door with physical silver and gold. And, and you know, I, there's a number of reasons I do that. Um, in my opinion, the less records, the better. I don't want to write a check. I don't want to do a certified check, cashier's check, personal check. Don't want to put it on a credit card. Uh, don't want to purchase online. Again, the, the less information people collect about me, the better. But, you know, that's just me. Um, what do they say? Uh, just because I'm paranoid doesn't mean they aren't out to get me. So there's a couple of different types of money, flavors of money, if you will, categories of money 
when we start talking about buying gold and how do I buy gold. So the obvious distinctions, there's two. There's before tax money and after tax money. Now, if you're buying physical precious metals with before tax money, there's only one way to do that, and that is in a gold IRA account. That's what the IRS allows you to do with your pre-tax money. That um, you can you can take that money, you can transfer it or roll it over into a gold IRA account, and then purchase physical gold with your pre-tax uh, retirement savings. And so that's that's before tax money. Uh, it only applies to tax advantage retirement accounts. And then with after-tax money, obviously that's that's money that you will pay income tax on. Two things you can do with your after-tax money. One, you can do like I do, is I, I pull cash out of the bank. I've paid income taxes on it. I go to my local coin shop. I walk out with physical silver and gold. And then the second thing you can do is you could take your after-tax money and put it into a Roth IRA. And so you're still gonna pay income tax on it, but then you get the tax-advantaged uh, benefits of investing in an IRA account, a, a Roth IRA in particular. So two different things you can do with after-tax money. And then of course, you know, with a, with a Roth IRA investment, and this is true whether we're talking gold IRA or uh, uh, stocks and bonds, mutual funds, et cetera. At the end of the year, when you file your tax return, you indicate, hey, I put $7,000, or I, I think the cap this year is 7,500 for an individual. I put $7,500 into my Roth IRA, and then you take a deduction for it on your tax return. So another nuance of, uh, buying gold and silver is understanding what is the price. And when somebody talks about spot price, what, are they, what does that mean? Futures price, what does that mean? And so that's, that's what I'm addressing in these next uh, two slides, I think. So spot price is basically if you are buying in bulk for immediate delivery, you're going you're gonna to take possession of it today and key being you're buying it in bulk. And that, that doesn't mean two or three coins. <laughs> that means hundred, hundreds of ounces of gold or thousands of ounces of silver. And, and so where, where can I buy at spot price? Well, directly from a mine and again in bulk. And, you know, I've, I've never tried to do this. I've seen references to uh, supposedly China is going directly to precious metals miners at this point and buying uh, directly from them, buying Dore bars, which, you know, that's the unrefined um, uh, silver and gold, Dore. And then they take it back to China and refine it there. But uh, anyway, again, and I've put in bulk in bold to emphasize that you and me, mom and pop investors, we aren't going to buy at spot price because for one, we're not buying in bulk. And for two, if we walk up to a mining company and say, hey, I want to buy gold at spot price, <laughs> and they're going to laugh at us. So anyway, uh, but that is one way that you could buy at spot price. And then directly from uh, the COMEX or LBMA exchanges. And again, in bulk. And and we'll talk. I think in the next slide, I I, I uh, show what is what does in bulk mean. Um, and then this is this is the key, the bottom line. Unless you are buying from the exchanges or or directly from a mine, you're going to pay spot price plus a premium. And and that's what that's what we're talking about in this video is the premium that we will pay as we invest in physical precious metals. And of course we want to minimize, or at least I want to minimize the premium that I pay. I wanna pay the least premium possible. Uh, so futures price, we'll see references to, okay, spot price, futures price. Well, what is futures price? Well, when we're talking about futures, those are contracts that are issued, traded on the exchanges, the COMEX exchange, the LBMA, LBMA, which is London, 
And of course, at this point now, we've got the uh, the Shanghai Gold Exchange in China and then the Russian uh, Gold Exchange. And so, you know, um, the U.S. and London are not the only places that have precious metals exchanges. So, uh, so a futures price is related, obviously, to a futures contract. And the key to understand with futures price is that they are only applicable to precious metals that are in good delivery form. And that's, you know, that's the language that you'll see on the contracts is good delivery form. And what that means for gold is a 400 ounce bar. And for silver, it's a 1000 ounce bar. And then on the sil the silver contracts are actually for five of those. So it's five 1000 ounce silver bars is that's a single silvers contract on the uh, COMEX. Um, so good delivery form, 400 ounce bar gold, 1000 ounce bar of silver. So what's that going to cost you? 1.06 million. So a 400 ounce bar of gold is $1.06 million. And most of us, again, mom and pop investors, <laughs> we're not buying uh, certainly not buying at a single time a million dollars worth of gold We'd, and and 400 ounce bar. That that would be, a, in my opinion, that would be a, <laughs> a silly form to uh, buy gold in. What, what do you do with it? What do you do with a 400 ounce bar of gold? Um, and if you're in that category of investor, hey, more power to you, uh, you know, kudos. Um, and then, you know, a silver bar, a 1,000 ounce silver bar is about $32,000 uh, based on today's price. But again, you got to buy five of those. And so a single contract off of one of the exchanges is really, we're talking about $160,000. And so unless you're buying gold and silver at at that at that amount, those price points, million dollars worth of gold, hundred and sixty thousand dollars worth of silver, it's a moot point. You know, you're not going to go buy from the exchanges because you know you're not you're not buying at that level. I'm not buying at that level. So, uh, and so again, unless you're buying from the exchanges, you're going to pay spot price plus a premium. And so, and that's what I'm saying here. It's the bottom line <laughs> uh, from the exchanges or mine and in bulk, emphasis on in bulk, which is what we just talked about, 400 ounce bar of gold, 1,000 ounce, 5,000 ounce bars of silver, you're going to play, you're going to pay spot price uh, plus premium. So, and then this is just, I wanted to show, uh, to demonstrate, emphasize what I'm referring to when, when we talk about premiums. And so I put this slide together back on the 17th, so about six weeks ago. At the time, gold was $2,500, basically, and today it's $2,650, basically. And so in six weeks, gold has increased in price by $150 an ounce. So uh, precious metals prices are going higher, uh, just, just saying. Um, so these are all gold coins. Here's a, a tenth ounce uh, gold coin. In this column, I'm showing what is the type or the category of coin. And so this, this would be a special edition. It's one of the gold lunars. You know, if we go back to that uh, complaint that the consumer filed with the Better Business Bureau, he was buying, he called them lucky gold dragons. But I, I suspect that this is what he was buying. It was the Australian uh, lunar edition uh, gold coin. He was actually buying quarter ounce, uh, quarter ounce coins, and so he paid a ten percent premium over spot. The tenth ounce coins is a twenty percent premium over spot, and if we compare that to a one ounce, so one ounce is uh, ten percent. So in in this particular case. It doesn't make much difference whether you buy the one ounce or the tenth ounce. Uh, the premium is about the same, and and so that that's uh, interesting. Um, 
if we go to the bullion coins, and so they're, they're, uh, the bullion coins are uh, minted by the government mints. And so what U.S. mint, Australian mint, that is Perth mint, um, Philharmonics, uh, the British, British, um, uh, what's Britain's? I'm pulling a blank there. Austria is the Philharmonic. Um, anyway, 4.2% 4 if we're buying uh, Philharmonics, that's a bullion coin. Uh, American Gold Eagle, Eagles, 5.6% premium. And so anyway, the emphasizing that um, the premiums on the bullion coins are lower than the premiums on the special edition coins. And that's across the board. And so again, one ounce bullion bars and coins. And, and we'll see uh, that the premiums on silver coins are, are far higher than this. So let's keep going. Uh, and, and that's what we're looking at here. So silver premiums, these are coins. And I've, I've highlighted the ones that are just obscene. Oh, I, I didn't. Let's before we leave this, let's talk about uh, proofs. So this could this was one of the categories that I said, you know, this is a mistake. In my opinion, you don't want to buy uh, proof coins. And so here it is. You're going to pay a 15 percent premium for a proof gold eagle. You can get the same coin for a third of that premium about Um and again, gold is gold. It doesn't matter. Yeah, the, pr the proof coins are pretty. They're shiny. They come in a fancy box. You get a certificate of authenticity. Authenticity, yeah, which, you know, who, <laughs> who cares? Um, uh, knowledgeable investors certainly don't. You know, if you said, "Ooh, well, but it's it's uh, it comes in a fancy box and it's got a certificate of <laughs> authenticity, um, I mean, I won't laugh at you, but I won't I won't buy from you either. I won't pay a premium. Gold is gold. I'll pay you I'll pay you a, a spot plus a reasonable premium, which would be that, and not that. So anyway, um, and <laughs> I'm 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 going deeper into the subject than I had intended. One of the challenges, one of the reasons that people lose money by buying uh, fractional ounce coins and special edition coins is they get, uh, they fall for the sales marketing and they believe that somehow these coins are special, that there's more investment demand. And then they take those coins down to their local coin shop and try to sell them. And, and they can sell them, but the, the, the local coin dealer, knowledgeable investor, he doesn't care that you think it's a special edition coin, he's going to pay you spot, actually minus a little bit. <laughs> and so you paid a premium to get a special edition coin. What you can sell it for is it's it's just as though it were an ounce of bullion. And, and that's, that's how, uh, if you read the uh, BBB complaints, that's another common complaint is, you know, somebody, hey, I, I bought these coins, paid, you know, X, Y, and Z, and then I went to sell them and I lost 40%. And, and it's exactly what I was just explaining. They, they paid a premium for special edition coins. And when they got to their local coin shop, the, the dealer explained to them, it's like, what it's worth to me, that's an ounce of silver, it's an ounce of gold or quarter ounce, whatever. And this is what I'm willing to pay for it. He doesn't care that it's you think it's a special edition coin. So anyway, let's keep going here. So silver premiums, obviously across the board, the premiums are much higher on silver uh, than on gold. The, the reason, one of the reasons that is so is because the silver market is operating in a deficit. There is more demand for silver then there is supply. And that has been true for the last three years, which we'll see a couple of slides ahead. We'll, we'll see the, the, the supply versus demand. Uh, so anyway, uh, half ounce coin, special edition. Again, we're talking these silver lunar dragons, 64% premium. 
that that just silly, you know. So it's a half ounce of silver today. Silver is worth about thirty uh, thirty two is is the price uh, per ounce. And so you'd think half ounce of silver is worth sixteen bucks. Well, <laughs> twenty four dollars. You know, it's a sixty four percent premium over spot. Uh, this chart also uh, put it together on the seventeenth when silver was at twenty nine. Today's silver is at 31, 3180 or something like that. So anyway, the prices uh, are higher today than they were when I put this information together. But the uh, the premiums don't change significantly. So if, if we went and looked today, we would still find that the premium on this particular coin is 60 plus percent. And, and again, in my opinion, that is just silly, ridiculous to pay that kind of premium uh, for <laughs> a silver or gold coin. And this is a good example. So you go and you pay a 64% premium for this coin, you take immediately, the same day, you take that coin down to your local coin shop and you say, hey, I want to sell this coin. He's going to offer you $32. And so, well, this is half ounce. So he's going he's gonna to offer you $16. <laughs> you paid 24 for it. He's going to offer you 16. And so you, basically you just lost most of that 60%. It just don't, don't, buy, don't buy fractional ounce. Don't buy special edition. Don't buy proof coins. Just please, <laughs> please. Uh, one ounce. You see, even here, with the one ounce, it's a special edition, meaning it's not bullion. It's not a bullion coin. Here's a bullion coin. Well, and, and even the uh, American Silver Eagles, 30% um, premium on silver, the U.S. Silver Eagles. And, and the reason that U.S. Silver Eagles in particular are um, have a high premium, it's because the U.S. Mint does not, produce, they don't mint enough American Eagle silver coins to meet demand. And so there's always a high premium on uh, American silver American Eagles because they, they just don't print enough. Doesn't matter that they're, uh, they're supposed to print mint enough coinage to meet demand. Whatever the demand is, they are obligated um, to produce that much but they don't. And so anyway, there's a, a large premium on uh, U.S. American Silver Eagles. This is a better example of a proof, or not a proof, excuse me, a bullion silver coin. And we can see 17% premium on a uh, bullion silver coin. That's still, in my opinion, that's still a high premium. But if we compare that to you know, here's a here's a one ounce uh, special edition coin, thirty six percent premium. So a bullion coin is basically half of that. You know, half as much premium on a bullion coin over a special edition coin. And and these are the kind of things that you know a a, a gold IRA representative um, or a a a salesperson who does not have your best interests in mind. This is the kind of thing, it's a special edition coin. They're going to try to tell you that there is greater investment demand. When you go to sell it, you'll make more money. And it's simply sales marketing. Uh, this, is, this is truly obscene. So this is a proof American Silver Eagle. 227% premium on the darn thing. So it's, it's one ounce of silver. It's 95 bucks. You know, or based, you know, based on back in the middle of August, it was 95 bucks. It's going to be higher than that today. But um, uh, the point is a 227% premium. It's just obscene. I, you know, maybe if you're a coin collector, get one of them, you know, and pass it down to your grandkids and they'll, ooh, and ah, and, and you know, hopefully they won't cash it in for uh, buying bubble gum and soda. Um, <laughs> if you're lucky, uh, but you certainly don't want to invest in a bunch of, of any of these, any of these special editions. It just, just silly in my opinion. Here's, here's an example. This is the two ounce 
54% premium. And you, and you'd think, you know, well, the bigger, the better, and, and the premium ought to be lower on a larger coin, you would think, uh, but it's not. So again, stay away from uh, the two ounce coins. Silver bars, I, I was actually surprised when I saw this, the 23% um, premium on a 10 ounce uh, silver bar, you know, and this obviously that's bullion, uh, but that, that, in my opinion, is a high premium to pay on a 10 ounce bar, 100 ounce bar, 11%. And, you know, now, now you're down in the, uh, okay, I don't like it, but um, I don't have any good options. I'll pay an 11% premium, you know, okay. Um, there are options, but, and, and I think we'll see them. Um, but anyway, if we're buying silver, if we're investing silver, this is about the best we're going to do is buy it in 100 ounce form. And of course, you know, we're talking $3,200 uh, to, to, to buy a 100 ounce bar of, of silver. And so if you're investing at lower dollar amounts than that, you really don't have any choice other than, you know, you could get 10 ounce bars or uh, one ounce, one ounce rounds, basically bullion coins. Uh, gold prime premiums on coins. This this is from a private broker. And so I mentioned, you know, a couple of different ways, four different ways or places where you can buy physical precious metals, one of them being private brokers. There's a couple of those. You can find them online. This one that I'm, I'm using as an example, he adds a one to three and a half percent commission depending on whether you're a first time buyer or you have some history with him um, and then the size of your order. And so these, these uh, percent over spot that's in this column, you have to add his commission uh, on top. But, but notice this is, this is the, the key, almost no premium on selected coins. So these aren't American Eagles. They aren't, Lucky Dragons, um, you know, they aren't Philharmonics, they aren't Krugerrands, etc. They are unique gold coins in this case. These are all gold coins. And he gets these from time to time and, and typically gets a, a fairly, you know, gets hundreds of them um, and then sells them uh, at a very low price, you know, relative to... Uh, buying uh, <laughs> buying from an online broker. Uh, but again, you have to go to a, a private private broker to get these kind of prices. So and these these are fractional ounce uh, fractional ounce coins you know that you see here. So a British sovereign uh, 0.23 ounce, French francs uh, 0.18, 0.19. So these are fractional ounce coins at a very low price. And I've bought some of these, you know, be, because again, to me, gold is gold. I don't care what it is. Uh, U.S. American Eagle, French francs, British sovereigns. I don't care. Gold is gold. Silver is silver. That that that's just my opinion. So, um, and I've also I've I've visited uh, one 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 of the the local coin shops that I buy from. Um, he had what he had. Uh, well, he had, they were French francs for that matter. Yeah, he had uh, 20 of these French francs that he had purchased and, and nobody wanted them. And so he was offering them to me at a, uh, a very nice price. So um, you'll, you'll run into those kind of deals if you're, if you're looking for them. Uh, again, silver, uh, this is the same private broker that I was referring to. So you have to add his commission to these uh, percent over spot prices. 90% uh, silver at 1.6%, you know, and, and compare that to what we we're just looking at from the online broker <clears throat> to get a 10 ounce bar, for example, and it was 23% premium. Well, here, I can pay 1.6%, even if I'm at three and a half, that's, uh, what's that, 5%. So 5% over spot, I can go buy 90% silver. 
And uh, me personally, this is this is my ideal uh, way of investing in silver. It's these junk coins. Um, I won't go into the, the reasons for that, but that, that's my preferred way of buying silver at this point um, is 90% junk, junk silver, 40% uh, halves. So look at that, 0%. He's just trying to get rid of these things because nobody wants them. And so when he when he buys them, you know he'll buy them from from uh, people who are are selling them, and and so he buys them and then resells them. Um, doesn't mark them up over spot price. Still gets his commission. The the unique uh, the reason that he's selling at such low premiums is because these are unique. Uh, coins, you know, they're not the mainstream, widely demanded. You know, again, they're they're not U.S. Eagles, they're not Philharmonics, they're not Lucky Dragons, etc. Uh, they're they're oddballs, if you will. But again, gold is gold and silver is silver. I don't care. It's forty percent silver. I mean, other other than it's bulky. I mean, you know, um, if you're buying a lot of silver. Uh, it's it's already ninety percent silver is bulky, and you know because they're individual coins, they're kind of, you know they don't store well. You can't stack. It's not easy to stack bags of ninety percent junk silver. But uh, anyway, that's another topic. Um, and then if we're talking about generic, whether it's round, and, and of course a round is a one ounce coin. Uh, but it doesn't come from a government mint. It comes from one of the other, like Sunshine Mint, uh, Pamp Mint. Uh, and so when you see somebody talking about generic rounds, that's what they're referring to. It's a, Basically, it's a one-ounce coin that does not come from a government mint. Uh, low premium over spot, 10-ounce bar. So 0.4%, even if you're at 3.5% commission, so that's still, that's 3.9% versus buying from one of the online dealers and you're going to pay, uh, what is that, a 10 ounce? Yeah, you pay a 23% 23, 23 premium for a 10 ounce bar if you go to JM Bullion or AppMax, one of those mainstream online brokers. You can find better prices. Uh, <laughs> contact me and I'll tell you who they are. So generic 100 ounce bar, 1.6% versus I well we we're at eleven percent so one point six three and a half again five point one percent you know I'd rather pay a five percent premium than a an eleven percent premium but you know hey that's that's just me so um ah in this table so this is what I was referring to earlier uh the silver market and this is global there, there is a deficit in silver supply. There, there is more demand than supply uh, in silver. And that has been true for the last, well, the last three years and it's continuing in 2024. So actually for four years now, if we see back here in 2020, uh, there was a, a, a small surplus. These are millions of troy ounces. Uh, so we had a surplus in 2020, but subsequent years we've been operating in deficit, which means silver is coming out of the warehouses to meet demand. And, and that's why, again, that's why premiums on silver are higher across the board than they are for gold, because the silver market is operating in a deficit right now and, and has been for several years. So um, that that's the primary reason that, that premiums on silver are so high. And then of course the, the, the US, um, the silver eagles from the US Mint, uh, those have a high premium for two reasons. One, silver in deficit. And then two, the US Mint doesn't mint enough of those silver eagles to meet demand. So uh, premiums vary with supply and demand. We've been talking about this. Um, isolated situations, that's what I was referring to with the private 
broker, private online broker. Uh, he gets, you know, he buys a couple of hundred of the French 20 francs and then he sells them for a good deal or he gets, you know, he gets a load of 40% uh, silver coinage and he, he sells them at a low price. So those are the isolated uh, supply and demand situations. Um, you're not going to find those kind of prices at Costco, <laughs> Walmart, probably at your, at your local coin dealer, um, unless you develop a good relationship with your coin dealer uh, such that he'll call you, call you personally when he gets a, a good deal in. So, um, and as I was saying, they're, they're non-mainstream coins, you know, French, French francs, 40% silver, um, local coin shop or online broker, you, you may or may not get access to these kind of prices. Uh, there, one, there's one online broker in particular that um, he fairly regularly has those uh, good prices available. And again, if you contact me, I'll let you know who that is. So when do fractional ounce coins make sense? And of course, this is just me stating my opinion. In a gold IRA account, never, never, ever, ever, ever. <laughs> <laughs> fractional ounce coins never make sense in a gold IRA account. What's the point? I, you know, it just, it doesn't make any sense to me um, to buy fractional ounce coins, pay those outrageous premiums in a gold IRA account. It, it just doesn't make any sense. Um, same thing with the special edition coins in a gold IRA account. What, what's the point? You, you know, you may or may not ever take delivery of those special edition coins. And so who cares if it's a pretty coin or it's a proof coin, it's gonna sit in the custodian's vault unless you distribute those coins out of your gold IRA, uh, you'll never take personal possession of those coins. But again, that uh, that's another topic. So um, if you are a coin collector, well, obviously as a coin collector, or an art collector, or stamp collector, car collector, whatever it is, paying a premium just goes with the, just that's part of the game. You know, if you're a coin collector, you're going to pay a premium for numismatic coins. But understand that you're buying numismatic coins, you know. <laughs> uh, even as a coin collector, if you asked me, okay, does it make sense to pay uh, a 50% premium for a, a quarter ounce Lucky Dragon? No, <laughs> that is not a numismatic coin. It's a pretty coin. Don't get me wrong. And I've got some. I've got some of those, but I bought onesie twosie. I didn't go buy a hundred of them. And if we went back, if if we go back, let me look here. I'm on slide 19. Let's Let's go all the way back here. Oops, where to go? Here it is. So this poor investor, they bought uh, they bought twenty five right there. They bought twenty five quarter ounce gold coins, six hundred and twelve. So they bought six hundred and twelve of these two ounce silver coins, silver lucky dragons. They paid, uh, I think it was fifty four percent. So they paid a fifty percent premium for these two ounce coins and bought 612 of the darn things. I, I added it up. I think on this one order, this person lost at least $20,000 in excessive premiums. And I don't know about you, but you know, $20,000, that's a non-trivial amount of money to me. <laughs> it's not, I'm not gonna, uh, I'm not gonna waste $20,000 if I don't have to, well, you waste twenty thousand uh, dollars doesn't make any sense in any condition, any scenario. So, um, fractional ounce coins. When do they make sense? Again, it's it's if you're a coin collector. That's the only time, in my opinion, that fractional ounce coins make sense, um, unless we're talking about special deals. That you know, again, online private broker. Uh, maybe if your your local broker just happens to have something, um, 
and they were willing to sell it at a low premium. It's like, yeah, sure, go with go with fractional coins. You know, British sovereigns, French francs. Um, those those are essentially quarter quarter ounce gold coins. Um, and and in those cases, if you can get them for a low premium, sure, fractional ounce makes sense. But again, that's not the kind of coin. That is not what you will buy in a gold IRA account. It's not what you're going to buy at Costco or Apmex or JM Bullion, etc. Um, that's what we we're just saying. Oh, special editions. So I I talked about both topics in the last slide, and so here we're talking about fractional ounce. Basically, it never makes sense, in my opinion, unless you are a coin collector and then you're only buying onesie twosie, or you get a special, you get a very low premium, like French francs, um, and then you buy as many as you want, you know. Um, and again, gold is gold, silver is silver. Special edition. So now we're talking more, more uh specifically about like the lucky dragons. Um Oh, Australian crocodile, the saltwater crocodiles, you know, there's any number of these fancy coins. And one of the games that is played in, in the uh, gold IRA industry is that um, one gold IRA dealer will get the Australian uh, crocodile series of coins and another gold IRA dealer gets the, the, lucky, the Chinese Lucky Dragon series of coins. And so each of the dealers is able to say, hey, this is a special edition coin, and I'm the only person that's selling it. And it's absolutely true, <laughs> because that's part of the game that's played in the industry. The uh, the mints, they agree with the gold IRA companies. It's like, okay, we're only going to provide these to you. And then they go and they tell consumers that, oh, it's a special edition coin, and when you go to sell it, there's greater investor demand. And again, it's all just, it's sales marketing. Don't, don't fall for it. Um, yeah, so special edition coins, in my opinion, they never make sense. And, and if they do make sense, it's onesie twosie. You know, I've got some lucky dragons. Again, they're pretty coins. They, they're, they're, they're gorgeous coins, you know. Um, but again, onesie twosie, not 600, 612 of them. Uh, wrapping up, it's just, you know, it's a repeat of what I've been saying throughout this video. Stay away from fractional ounce coins and bars. Stay away from proof coins. Stay away from special edition coins. <laughs> repeat after me. One ounce bullion bars and coins. And that's it. That's all you need to take away from this, this video and you'll be head and shoulders above a whole lot of uh, investors who, you know, they go out with the intention of, of buying physical precious metals and they just get taken advantage of. Um, it's an unregulated market. I mean, and that, that's an that's a important thing to understand about uh, the, the physical precious metals markets. They are unregulated. And so... Um, the, the dealers that are uh, selling, you know, the, the, the representatives, when they tell you that these are special edition coins and there's greater investor demand, they're not breaking any laws. Uh, they're not getting sideways with the SEC, you know, the, uh, the SEC or any of, of the other uh, regulators of financial markets because, again, physical precious metals, it's an unregulated market. And so, all right, folks, I'm at... 48 minutes. I, I um, <laughs> That's plenty for one, one sitting. I am going to stop sharing my screen and I will talk to you in the next video. See you folks.